Hey guys, welcome back to Elise Reads and Speaks. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that one of the goals that I've set for myself is to go alphabetically through my bookshelf and read all the books that I haven't read. I'm <laughs> like, there's just so many. I'll link that, that first video down below if you haven't gotten the chance to watch it. I think there was like 30 on there. And then after I posted that video, I realized that there were some other books on my shelf that I hadn't gotten to and I don't know why I didn't include them. That was really stupid. Okay, but... Oh, since I have some subscription boxes, I've still been adding like a little bit more and more as we go. And then last night at book club, Tatiana brought all these arcs from this event that she went to in DC. And then I just took so many of them. And I don't know why. But you know what? I had to like restart back at the beginning of my bookshelf. I'm only letting myself do that once. And it's because I got The Handmaid's Tale. And if you know that author, you know her last name begins with A. So I just, I had to read it. And I was like, this is my one time. The one time I'm going back to the beginning of my bookshelf if I get any books after this point that I've gone further than, then they're just going to have to wait until the next go around. Okay, but right now I'm at A, so all of these books that I got last night from Tatiana, I need to put on my list. So this is the first one that I had heard of, The Furies. That one's actually on my TBR. The rest of them... I don't know much about them, but they sounded interesting when I just perused through them. So I'm not going to tell you about them. I'm just going to show you. So we have the Furies. We have, okay, you know me. I like the World War II Nazi Hitler stuff. Um, and this one sounds pretty interesting. It, it's from the, the Nazi Hitler youth. I don't know if it's their stories or the impact that they had on the world, but I think that sounds pretty cool. Next up, we have got... Something that sounds like Saved, the movie Saved. You remember that one with uh, Jenna Malone, Mandy Moore, Macaulay Culkin? It was such a great movie. And it it sounds like a little play on this, or at least along that, that vein. And, I mean, if you've watched my channel before, you know I'm not particularly religious, so it seems like it would be up my alley. The last two that I got from her were The Hive. That is clearly not going to be the real cover of The Hive because it says final cover to be revealed. But I was looking at it and it sounded like kind of cheesy and good. And then Tatia leaned over and she goes, I think you might like that one. <laughs> Girl, like, okay, you pegged me. I get it. All right. I have a type. And the last one is Orpheus Girl. Again, I don't know much about these books, but I know that I'm going to read them because I'm about to put them on my bookshelf and I go alphabetically through. So that's like, what is it? One, two, three three, four, five that I've added, but also I said from subscription boxes. And from my subscription boxes, I got The Kingdom in Shelf Love Reads, and that one looks super cool. And then from YA Book of the Month, I think that's a new thing that they're doing, I chose Past Perfect Life. Now this last one that I had to add to my shelf, I know, I'm adding so many more books, I got from my local used bookstore, and it's by Caroline B. Cooney. Have you guys ever read Both Sides of Time? Okay, this is apparently volume one that has both sides of time and out of time. And if you can see a little barcode on there, I don't think you can. Let's see. Oh yeah, then you see it's 95 cents. You can't beat that, man. Like I have told you before, if it is not on sale, then it is not fun. All right, Both Sides of Time, I loved. I think I read that when I was in high school, possibly even middle school. And it's got some time travel in it, except she's not in charge of the time travel. She like jumps to one place, she jumps to another one, and she has no say in it. And it kind of like left off like, oh, I don't know where she's going. And I really thought that was it. Like the end of the, the book was that you just, you didn't know where she'd go next, which is kind of cool. Um, and I'm not spoiling it for you, by the way. Like, that's, that's not the story. Okay, but apparently there's a second one, so I'm very excited to read it. Both books are in here. I'm only going to count this as one book, though, since I have read one in here already. But I'll tell you right now, I'm going to reread it because I don't really remember every single thing that was in there. I just remember really liking it. So when I went back through my bookshelf and did a full count, it's like 36 books. And then I just added eight more. So that brings me to 44 Okay, now 44, that's including from the beginning of the year. So the books that I've gotten through already, I believe it's seven. There was Heart of Thorns by Bree Barton. There were the three Chloe King books by, I don't even remember. I know she was a B, okay? Her last name started with B. Oh my gosh, don't read those. Remember, don't read them. Um, then I went to Diviners by Libba Bray, which took me two months. That's why I'm so behind. It took me two months. That's such a big book. All right. And the other two are further down. It is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyong. Blah. And then there was The Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schultz. And the reason that I was able to skip further ahead of my book list 
well, my bookshelf, is because those were available on audiobook through my library. And I'm not going to give myself caveats there. I mean, if an audiobook is available, I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to tell you right now, The Heart of Thorns, Chloe King, Girls of Paper and Fire, that shit don't need to stay on my shelf. I will probably bring that back to the store. Not crazy about it. The other ones, though, like Diviners and um, Four Dead Queens, I think that may stay there. I think. We'll see. I think they were both like 3, 3.5 that I gave them. We'll see. So anyway, I just wanted to do a check-in and let you guys know that I'm like failing miserably. Like if failure was a class, I would be acing it right now, you know, like top of the list of failure. Um, I do not expect to get through all these books by the end of the year because let's see, I said that I read f seven and 44, 44 minus seven, come on math, 37. So 37 books that I have to physically read by the end of the year of six months. I mean, I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but man, like physical books are harder for me to read because I get so tired. It's much easier for me to listen to an audiobook and just fly through it that way. So if any of these are available on audiobooks, I will try to give them a listen and start packing them off my list that way, but we will see. Okay, thank you for tuning in. I hope this was a fun, short video for you. Oh, you know what? I think down below, I'm going to leave a list of all the books that I have not read on my bookshelf. If you have any opinions on them, if you like strongly think that I should read one or strongly think that I should not read one at all, I mean, just let me know. I'm interested. I, I'm one of those girls that like sticks to the task, so I'm going to read them anyway because they're on my shelf, but I'd still like to know what you think. And also, if you're looking at them and you think, hey, if this girl likes this book, then she might like this one. Leave some recommendations for me, too. Clearly, I'll read it all. <laughs> all right. Again, thank you for tuning in. Hope you like this short video. Bye.